Hey, my, um, we out there, so, excuse the hair, we got the ugliest days of the dress, but we had the last few chapters of this week with this book, Against Nature, chapter 35. Kruger was closed, lights off, locked door, no sign of movement inside. I stood out front and stretched my phone for listening for a, for a call of Uli Kruger, C-O-U Kruger, anything in, in that wheelhouse. Came up empty, like cast and countless New Yorkers. They were probably living on someone else's sublease, with no landline. Had all meal delivered to the bar. Home was an anomalous notion. Detective Miller had their addresses, but that information would not be forthcoming. Not for a murder suspect intent on pinning a rap on his son with a mother alibi. I remember Leah mentioning Henry Street and found it a block south of the bar. The street ran from the shadow of the Manhattan Bridge all the way to Grand Street, just before the East River. It reminded me of my home as a teenager on Pitt Street after the fall. There was a graceless stretch of tenements and projects, public schools and backtops, playground. The top of one world trade could be seen across the islands to the west, beaming in the night sky. I wandered through blocks for a while, examined the track, the tired faces, the worried resignations of the have not in a city that has everything. I tried questioning few without success. An older Chinese man broke into a room, I mean broke into a run the moment I approached. A twenty something hipster told me to fuck off and kept walking. I caught up with three teenagers, black kids leaving their playground, the only ones with the courtesy to stop and answer my questions, but they claimed never to have seen the folks I described. I was contemplating a drink with my phone buzz. It was 305 area code, Miami, Lips, or maybe Tasha, calling back. I figured I'd answer and heard an audible background noise. The call ended. I texted the number and asked who it was. The ellipse popped up, announcing a reply being composed. I received an, uh, I received an emotion of a smiling um, purple devil counted with what the fuck? Again, an ellipse appeared. I sat on a nearby stoop and looked at the screen. When the reply arrived, I almost collapsed. There was a video clip. <clears throat> I recognized the image as once Stevie's bedroom. I played press. The camera scanned the boy's darkened room until it reached the bed. There he was asleep, under the covers, seamlessly unharmed. I waited for the person holding the phone to turn his, it on himself. I heard his low laugh. The clip ended. I was in the street, all waving, but it was cabless. I almost as coast a passing Camry. I removed the driver from force if necessary. I maintained just enough wits to call a lift. Waited on the corner for three desperate minutes, scanning for lit cash until he rolled up. I gasped out of the car's address, told him it was an emergency. Offer all the money in my wallet as a tip if he ignored all traffic laws. The driver was a young African dark guy, dark as night, with bright, hard eyes. He glanced back, took my measures. What's the emergency, he asked. <coughs> a kid is in trouble, an eight-year-old. I think an adoption is in progress. He turned to face the road. Keep your money, he said. I'll get you there. I was flung back against the... <clears throat> Back against the seat by the force of his foot on the gas. We hit 70 weaving through traffic on Bryant Street. He sped through a red light than another. I didn't know what his vista status looked like, but he drove like a man with the diplomatic and mimicry. We burrowed up the barrels, spun left on Houston, right on Lafayette, the city streaming by. On 4th Avenue, I tried to think it through. Where was Julius' bodyguard? Turns and his soldiers from Warriors Security. Where was Julia? How can how had he gained access to Stevie? What has he done to the kid? My thoughts spun out of orbit. Questions rolled past like a meteor shower. Once the wreck hit and I explode. We were approaching the coldest building when I saw the siren spinning in front of the building. Two police cars out front. Commotion already in motion. I wasn't the first one on the scene. Wasn't the only call. My driver plowed to a stop next to him. Good luck, he said, go. I tossed four twenties over to the seat when he stopped. He may not have wanted them, but the man had earned it. Thank you, I called. 
I approached a pack of cops and a doorman speaking with alarm. They did not acknowledge me. It was food delivery. Ernie was saying, I smelled the, I smelled the thigh food. Miss Cohen approved it. Her security too. How was I to know? What did he look like, sir? Was he Asian? Asked the cop. No, he was white. He was wearing a black sweatshirt and black Yankees hat pulled low. I didn't get a good look at his face. White guy doing delivery for a dive plate that didn't arouse my any suspicious as another cop. No, I mean, yes, it does now. That's partly why I called. It's been 20 minutes since I let him up. Too long for a delivery. I called upstairs to Miss Cohen and there was no answer. Her security always answers. There's been... Well, something must be wrong, so I called you. What's going on out here? Asked a Bob Tone behind us. The group turned together to find Terrence, Julie's primary guard, standing over them. The doorman stirred, started to speak. The car stopped over him. Who are you? He asked. Terrence Jones, Warrior Security, he said. And the employee of Julia Cohen, does this concern her? Terrence, your partner Paul approved the delivery. The doorman burst in. Burst in. Julie did too. How was I supposed? I caught his eye. Dolly, he said, what's going on? Get us up there. I said, where the fuck were you? Dinner. I handed him my phone, played the video, and watched his face. When did you get that? He asked, moving fast. About 10 minutes ago. I said, got here as fast as I could. Cops were already here. It's a 305 area called Miami. You know who sent it? Name's Oliver Lip. Pretty sure he's behind all the murders. His father wrote the note, I added. We were in the lobby now. The cops called and after us. Ernie, the doorman, still babbling uselessly at the door. Turns, waved his entry pass, and took it back stairway. Taking three, taking steps three at a time, I followed. Behind us, cop, cops shouted to freeze. We ignored him. His weapon was drawn as he positioned himself in front of the Cohen's door. Stay down, he ground at me. Then we were inside the apartment searching and shouting for Stevie and Julia. We found his partner, Paul first, shot through the chest in the entry foyer. The bag of thigh food sat at his feet. On the living room floor, Julia laid in a splash of blood. Turns knelt and fell for a pause. Alive, he said, help her. He was all down the hall towards the kid's room. Julia was unconscious, her face smashed and bloody. It looked like she... Taking the butt of a gun to the nose, I shook her head. She started to stir. Kids gone, shouted to us. Fuck. I heard him search every room, each door opening and slamming shut. Knew he wouldn't find anything. My mind raced with doom. My blood boiled with impotent rage. The cops charged in. They got me down on the floor, found Terrence, and forced him into submission. We tried to explain. Julie was beginning to gain consciousness when the doorman came rushing into the room. He's getting away, Ernie cried. He's taking the car. He's driving away with Stevie. Everyone reacted at once, but I got away first. I was up on my feet and moving for the stairs before anyone could stop me. I made it down to three flights and out the lobby doors in time to see Julia Benz turn left at the end of the block on 2 Fifth Avenue. I chased after it, turned the corner in time to see it turn left again onto 10th Street. By the time I reached those three blocks down, the car was gone. I kept running, searching in four directions at the intersection. It was a calm night without disruption. The car that sped past me before having even been noticed. Steve was gone. <clears throat> I took out my phone, started to dial Terrence's number. A message popped up, the 305 number. You or the boy, it read, for Henry Street now. I was back waving for empty cabs in the street. This time I found one hourly in front of a deli on the corner of Nike University. I dove into the back, called out the address, a bored Pakistani glass back, his face full of felicity. On break, he said through a mouse tool. Not anymore, I said drive. Such rulers to city cab drivers does not fly, but this time he seemed to grasp the urgency. Maybe it was the m mania in my eyes. Maybe I was just riding some good luck with drivers. Or maybe he was in another decent New Yorker who knew when it was time to lend a hand. For the second time that hour, I was thrown back against the seat, back seats as my driver sped through the city streets. A kid has been abducted. <clears throat> I panned up a 20 seats. Soon I get there, the better chance we can save him. I'll get you there, said my driver. His name was Allah, and he drove like a champ. 
Ten minutes later, in a blur of Broadway, through the, through the maze of Lower Manhattan streets, I was approaching the same spot I just left, the same block where I received that video of Steve Barron. The stoop where I watched it was just a few doors down from 4th Henry Street. Yuli Kruger's promise, the sun was returning to the womb for its final reckoning. I looked up at the crumbling building, same as all the others, same as the one that cast hid from me so long, same as my old apartment on Pitt Street, where my mother drowned drunk in a bathtub, same as ones that housed countless miseries in this miserable city without memory. The smell of rotten fish filled the air. Graffiti covered the size of Chinese corner markets. As I approached the red front door, my phone lit up. I glanced down at the text, apartment two it read, he was watching me as he'd been doing all along. I pressed the button, waited for the admission, and went up. And I'll be back with chapter 36.